Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. I'm Catherine Ide, Managing Director of Professional Practice and Member Services at the Center for Audit Quality. I'm pleased to be joined today by Scott Zimmerman. Scott is the America's Assurance Innovation and Digital Leader with EY. Scott, thanks so much for joining us, and welcome to Profession in Focus. Thanks, Catherine. Really happy to be here today. Really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. So, Scott, as an innovation leader in the public company auditing profession, you get to think about how to incorporate things like data analytics, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence yeah. into audit and assurance work of the future. It's really fascinating how these innovations are rapidly changing the mechanics of the audit. Can you share with our viewers what's happening on the ground right now? How are those innovations being implemented on audits today? Sure, sure. And I think, Catherine, the biggest thing everyone needs to realize is this is a massive change management exercise. So we've got people out there that are very smart, understand data, use it all the time, but now we've got to convert it over to the audit. Okay, and I think maybe one of the ways to think about it, and I heard you mention artificial intelligence, is let's walk with analytics before we run with AI. Let's focus on the data, because that's the start of everything. Let's understand it. Let's be able to deploy it in analytics, and let's do it with the intent of actually changing the audit. Right, not doing analytics just to do analytics, but very purpose-driven mm -hmm. with a way to actually change the procedures and impact not only our own strategy, but the way that our clients interact with us. With an eye towards effectiveness and efficiency. Oh, of course. Quality is always number one. Yeah. I mean, the quality is absolutely, and I think it's, it's hard, to, uh, hard to argue that when you're looking at 100% of a data population, okay, as long as you do it the right way, you're going to end up with a higher quality audit than if you're looking at a lot smaller percentage than 100%. Right. So if you had a crystal ball, what would you say would be the most profound change coming to the audit in the next five years? Uh, what, I, what I think is going to be the most profound change is the way that our people are able to think much more operationally, much more almost strategically, meaning today in the way we've kind of audited for, I don't know, 150 years has been very account-based. Okay, when we get these kind of data sets, we pivot almost to process-based, which is exactly the way that our clients operate their business. So it's no longer looking at just receivables or just cash or just sales. It's about looking at sales, correlating them to receivables, correlating the cash, and seeing that, wait a minute, I've got 98% of my revenue that actually turned to cash. That's pretty compelling existence evidence, right, around right. sales, which is kind of the starting point for everything. So I just, I see this dramatic change in the way that our people are able to move from very burdensome manual, kind of not taking advantage of our people's intellect to really allowing them to apply right out of the gate their thinking and their innovative mindset. So given that, what can investors and audit committee members and other stakeholders expect from the audit of the future that they may not necessarily be seeing today? Well, again, I think, and I've been able, I've been lucky enough to speak, I don't know, in the last you know, six to eight months, maybe 150 to 200 audit committee chairs and members. So I have pretty good insight <laughs> into what they're thinking. But it, again, it, it's, it's much more about the operations of the business. So if I'm an audit committee member, you know, I've got a very high level view and I want the process to run right. I want to know that management and the control infrastructure, okay, is working appropriately. When I've got external auditors that are looking at 100% of the transactions and looking across process, I get to sleep a lot better, right. okay, than saying, wait a minute, I got a sample of 50 of a, you know, of a, you know, a billion transactions, whatever it is. So I think the, I think the biggest, the biggest change is going to be, again, back to the dialogue we're having with management, back to the dialogue we're having with audit committees and doing it at a much more accelerated pace, mm -hmm. right? Once we get data, we're not gonna be looking at it, you know, one time a year or two times a year. We have the opportunity to look at it 12 times a year mm -hmm. if we want and really accelerate the observations and inquiries that we normally have. It's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, and g given that the use of data analytics and artificial intelligence and other automation is increasing, mm -hmm. Some have said that the role of the human auditor will be decreasing in the audit of the future. I think those of us in the profession know that's not necessarily going to be the case. Yeah. It's just the role of the people in the audit is going to change. Can you share with our viewers your perspective on that evolution of the human element of the audit? I don't think, Catherine, I can more passionately believe in anything more than what you just said. 
okay? You know, there is no question that our people are not gonna be, you know, you can think about it like 10 times. So if we think that performing the same amount of work is gonna take one out of every 10 people today, think back 25 years ago when Excel came in, right. or technology. I don't think there's any firm out there that believes they have one-tenth of the people that they did 25 years ago. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be looking at 10 times more of the information, providing 10 times more of the analysis, and everything will be domain-driven. I'm, I'm a firm believer that technology is commoditized. Mm. Everybody has access to the technology. It's really around how our people use their minds to use that technology that will be difference making. And that's why I see us being able to move into just such more thoughtful, important, kind of focus on the things that matter. And given that, what skill sets should the auditor of the future have to be able to execute on those audits? Right, so I think, I think a lot of the students and the auditors that are already in the profession, you know, are very much natural born problem solvers. Okay, and I think, you know, they're not necessarily gonna have to change the skills that they're good at. I think they're just gonna have to apply it in a little bit different way. Um, be able to react faster and adaptive, be able to think a little bit differently. So if you've got something that's traditionally looked at you one way, innovation is about you know finding a new way to do an old thing, maybe faster, simpler, and better. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the skills you know are going to be identical. I mean, I guess if you had to really push it, it would be you know this innovative mindset or ability to think differently, a natural curiosity, you know, analytic driven. I think our, our, our faculty, our students, are, they are already analytic driven. The problem is we're not necessarily being given the information to apply it in the right way. So mm -hmm. I just think it's going to allow them to surface those skills a lot easier, mm -hmm. a lot sooner and a lot better. Scott, thanks so much for those valuable insights and perspectives. And thank you viewers for joining us for this edition of Profession in Focus.